הגות ווכר הבויסאי. אה, ליבי נשמעה סימי מירוסי, רוס פס מרדכי. We have some tremendous guests in the house here. We have a Rav Mansur. What's your first name, Rav Mansur? Rav Mechol Mansur. From Brooklyn, right? Farakway, Farakway. From Chazak. Chazak. What a schos. He doesn't always listen to the daf. Just to, nah. Listens always. Always listens to the daf. Psh, very close. And we have the Kovacs here. What's your name? Yossi. Yossi and? Eitan and? Shalom. All members of the daf from? Silver Spring in Baltimore. Silver Spring in Baltimore. Mayor Kovacs, oh, that's right. We have Josh in the house. <laughs> Kids are giving all the stuff. I know you've heard this many times in the past few weeks, how beautiful and lovely looking the shabbos. There's other guys, other, what's your name, Tzadik? You're not such a guest. I'm a guest. Cats? Casper. Casper, yeah, you came last, okay. And next to you, Donnie, who's that guy next to you? Don't embarrass him, just say he's the, yeah. Steinberg. Steinberg. Okay, who else? My 11 year old grandson. 11 year old grandson, wow. You ever take him up on a plane? Yes. You've Another pilot. I know you've heard this many times in the past few weeks how beautiful and uplifting the Shabbos Zachar weekend was, but there's something that I want to share with you that comes up almost every day when I dive in Shachris. Shabbos morning when we're davening by Brikas Kriyashma, I have a rabbi. A, he was here in the base medrash, right here. A crazy emotion overcame me. Here I am in the base of medrash, from where my daily Torah comes out of. The words and feel it to understand the Gemara really hit me to the core. Only after a few minutes that I realized that the tzibah had already, already started Shmon Esrei. I really feel that the tzibahs were in Skabel, because I don't, I didn't know how it managed the Masechta without that uplifting shachers in MDY. The kids are Masechta Sivamas. Some people love it. Some people don't love it as, as much, but uh, kids are, it's Gevaldika stuff. By Morty Ness, I just wanted to re- introduce to you my friend from Yeshiva, Tari Tamima, Daniel Blatt. He's on the screen now in, six, in sixth grade, Tari Tamima. He told me he's learning Gemara with MDY. He's been learning with Shabbos. You just told me that your son, in eighth grade, in Darche? Darche. He's been learning with Shabbos with the Shir, and he told me it's Geshmak to do the Daf. All the best, Morty Ness. And just one more. My name is Ellie, and I live in Berlin, Germany. Could you please come to our community and give us chizuk? <laughs> Over six boys between 10 and 15 learn dafyon with you. So please, have a wonderful week, I think it says here. Ellie Afansenev. Afansenev. Afanesev. Afanesev. Okay, fine. Rabbi Isai, we have a lot to accomplish tonight, so we'll go right into it. Sponsors, good point. Let's see if I brought that. I did not get the, well, this is what I have printed here. The sponsor are Choydesh. Anonymous is Chus of Hill, Ben Sora, Dina, Rivko, Basfega, they should be Zoycha, Tezer, Shalkayama. Parnas Choydesh, friends and family, that's for this coil. Parnas Choydesh, friends and family, were for Shlema, for Yaakov, Yehuda, Ben Gittel. Parnas Choydesh, Breslau, Austin, Rosenberg, Shulman, and Tobias families, the Schus for Shlema, for Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Israel, Mayor David, Ben Yochevet, Drukshlita. Parnas Choydesh, by the Lachan Lebev families, Lakewood, New Jersey, because Torah is the best Segula. Ah, that's after. Is this new? I think this is new. This is when I brought the Bezdin to the front. That was the email. The Torah is the best Segula. Parnas Choydesh, Choydesh Nishan is sponsored by Yoyli. And we miss him. Second year yards of today. Yoyli from Lakewood. Parnas Chodesh, Aaron Freeman, Lizchus Parnoso, and Siad Shmaya, and continue at Slocha Trib Eli. Because I was going to ask the oil, actually. I didn't see this yet. Thank you. I was going to ask them to dive in for me because I'm going on, on this trip. I'm a little nervous about it. Every time I go, I leave. Who knows what's going to happen? Pesach last year was, uh, was very difficult. Being on the road, skiing, trying to ski. It's a whole, we need to prepare a shir. To learn the dive is one thing. To prepare a daf, you need to have the Shemaya. Justin Ivry. Wow, we miss Justin Ivry. Lulu Nishmas. Repinachas Aram, Ben Dov, Ber Alevi, Zerun Lebracha. 
Dr. Mark Berkson, in honor of my wife, Varda, for being such an amazing wife and mom. But boys, here we go. Today's Daf Chavav, and we have a little treat for the Oilam. We're starting from Daf Chavhei Omid Beis by the Mishnah. Mashur Shabbos treat. The official Mishnah is sponsored by MDY White Hilling Group, where we dive in for Rafuas Yeshua Shiduchim for Klai Yisrael and for the MDY White family. Join us at the Hillam.8mindav.com. Hachacham Sha'osar Sa'isha Ben Neder Abalo. You have a woman who made a nether. Terrible thing. She said that she doesn't want to benefit from her husband one iota for the rest of her life. In other words, she doesn't want to be married to him. She made a nether. So the halacha is that the husband could be made for the nether right away. He has one day. But he didn't. He liked the idea. It was great for a minute. The next day has harata. So the next best thing is to bring her to a rabbi. Bring her to a rav. And the rav could be matur nether. So the Rav looks at her, he says, oh, this is not a bad shidduch for myself. So he tells her, you know, no, no, I can't be matter. Sorry, I can't be matter. You have to get divorced. Wink, wink. And tomorrow, the next day, all of a sudden they're married. It's not, it's not appropriate. You can't marry her because people are going to start talking. The reason why he couldn't come up with a heter is because he wanted to marry her. Me, I know Shechotzebefanov. But if she was a Yavama and he happened to be there at Besden, we'll see how many. One, two, three. But he was, he was the cause of her Mion. Mion is that she was a Ketana who her mother or brother married her off. It's only with the Rabbanon. So she could just say, I don't want to marry this, be married to this person. She was a Yavama and she had a Duchalitza. But it was only me and Chalitza, you say, I know he can marry her, because he didn't have any influence over here. He just witnessed the Chalitza, he told her what to do. We're going to get into the whole Chalitza business. But, you know, there's a famous video that I saw once where this woman was doing Chalitza, and the, 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 the Dayan, and one of the Dayan said, No, that's not a good enough spit. Do it again. And she, No, again, you have to, you have to see the spit. So you have to be part of the bezin, but it's not like, oh, he, 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 he made her do chalitza so he can marry her. She had to do chalitza. So then he can marry her afterwards. It's not a big deal. Says the Gemara, Hayatira Yuseno. So now we're just going to go into the technical thing here. How many people were here? It seems like if he allowed the woman to stay married to her husband because he was able to be matter the nether. Yuseno. So then two, two months later, he divorces her. So the Chacham can marry her. But the Gemara is not talking about that so much. The Gemara is saying, How is he matter exactly? He was by himself. That's not enough. You need at least three. So we're talking about three. But if three people, if he's only a third of the, of the people there that said that there's a, a way out of this nether, then he could marry her. Why? Why? There's a brisa. I think it's a brisa. I think it's on this. Vasna usually is a mishnah, but I think this one is a brisa. If she did me on or that's our mishnah. Sorry, that's our mishnah. Forget that. Yeah, our mishnah. Okay, I'm not going to guess anymore. It says before in our mishnah. The reason he can marry her is because he's one of three. Says the Gemara, No, you're right. It's talking about there's, it was only him. And he was the only influence here. So typically you need three people for Atas Nadarim. But if he's a professional Nadarim Matir, then he could do it even by himself. Time of the Bezdin. So again, the Mishnah says, because he's part of a Bezdin. Seems like if he's one of two people, he cannot marry her. If he has 50% influence on what happened, on the outcome, he can't marry her. Oh, over here. I see already a Gimel. That's where it is. Great. Great. If he's one of the two witnesses that testify on real estate, he could buy the real estate 
He could marry this woman if he's one of the witnesses on the get. By the way, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins, that one of the two witnesses could buy the real estate, but not both of the witnesses, because then, in collusion, they, they did something here, something's funny. Okay. He that, that's exactly what the mission is coming to say. All we're trying to say, you don't have to be one out, of th- one out of three. You could be one out of two, and you could also testify. You could also marry this woman. But the Chiddush in the Mishnah is, it happens to be that Mion is within front of three people. Chaliz is in front of three people. So we're just talking about a Chacham who a woman came in front of him, she was neither, she's not going to benefit anything from her husband, he can't marry her. And we learned about, somebody comes from Medina Sayyam, and says, this is Bifani Nechta, Bifani Nechta, shouldn't marry this woman. Kana Asmao Shiyaitzi. But what if he was over on Chachamim, and he married her anyway? Rav Kahana Omar Kana Asmaitzi. Rav Kahana says, he must divorce her. Rav Ashi Omar Kana Asmaitzi, you don't have to divorce. Tana Lu Rav Zuti Dibay Rav Papi Kedibri Oimer Kana Asmaitzi. So, from Rav Papi's place, we say, you don't have to take her out. Where did he get it from? Did he figure this out himself, or he learned this from somewhere? This we learned, I don't know if we learned it yesterday, but it was the daf of yesterday. A person had a shemra that he's with the shifcha, and then she was released. He, there was a rumor going around that he was with a Goya, and then she became a Giyores, he shouldn't marry her. Vimkanas, ain't mighty. Allah is, just because it was a rumor, you don't have to divorce. Alma, what do you see? If there's a rumor, and you were over on the rumor, for that, you don't have to be mighty. But if there's a rumor about Eishasish, that you do have to take out, Rashi points out. Why? Because mechayer hadover, it's disgusting. People are talking about Aisha Sish, and you are strengthening the rumors by marrying that Aisha Sish. That's mechayer hadover, it's disgusting. You have to divorce her when it comes to Aisha Sish. Says the mission official mission sponsored by MDY Tehillim Group. The down for Rafu Yeshua's sign up, Tehillim, that 8 somebody. It's worth it for somebody. How much is the turning of the daf? Oh, the Mishnah. No, the Mishnah is hundred dollars each. Eighteen Mishnayos. So you just spent eighteen hundred dollars that people should sign up. So sign up, make it worth it for him. Say to him, eh, that's something else. He doesn't say say to him. He says we say to him. You just have to join us. Oh, join us to say to him. Okay, I get it. Says the Mishnah. So this chacham, a chacham, a woman came to him and said. She made a nether, a terrible nether. She wants, she wants to go back to her husband. And he says, no, you can't go back. So the halacha is, you can't marry her. However, this chacham, this aid that said, I'm bringing a get from Medina Sayyam, he shouldn't marry her. But if he had a, a, a wife at the time that he brought it, or the chacham had a wife at the time that he passed in the psaq, so we're not chayshish that he was thinking about this woman. Why? Because he's already married. Yes, in the time of the Gemara, they used to once in a while marry his second wife, but it wasn't common. Therefore, we're not chayshish. That he had something, some, some ulterior motive. Vameisu and his original wife died. Therefore, since there's nothing funny going on over here, so he's allowed to marry her. If a woman in between, from the time that the Rav Paskin, you cannot be with your husband. The nether is a nether, I don't have a way out for you, sorry, so the husband divorces her, you can't be with her. She said she's, she, she's gonna be, mud, she's mother and not from her husband. Okay, so he has to divorce her. So the Rav, she can't marry. So she goes and she marries Ruvain. And then Ruvain divorces her, Ruvain dies. Then this woman who two years ago went to the rabbi for Atar and Darim and he said no, could marry her. If the Rav has a son, so when not Chayshe that he says to himself, oh, you know, this woman looks perfect for my son, so let me pretend that the nether is one of these nadarim that I have no way out, 
and therefore the husband is going to divorce her. Tomorrow I'm going to call up the shach and raise shidduch, and now my son's going to have a good shidduch. That I'm not worried about. People do crazy things for themselves, but not so much for their kids or for their <laughs> relatives. To be over such a surim, nobody does for other people. Says the Gemara, Mesu in. Is Garshu loy. It says that if the Chacham, again, story, couple comes to the Chacham, the Chacham says, I'm sorry, I can't help you out. The nether that she made is too strong. I can't help you. Divorce her. And then the Chacham's own wife died. So then he's allowed to marry this woman. He had no idea she's going to die. Says the Gemara, but it's Garshu loy. But if he had the power, it was in his hands, and he went home, and he said, you know, today there's a woman I thought might be a good shidduch for myself. And he goes and he divorces his own wife so he can marry that woman. That doesn't count. People are going to say, he did it on purpose. He divorced her because he wanted to marry the woman that came to Bezdin. There are going to be rumors. But we learned in a b'risa, even if he divorced his own wife, after the divorce, he could go marry this woman with the nether. Like Asha. So read this, Rabbi, say yourselves. How do you understand these words? Without peeking anywhere in Rashi, in the art scroll. I think it's a little counterintuitive. Ha, the havik tata. Ha, the loy havik tata. If there was a fight, and there was not a fight. One case is there was a fight between the husband and wife. Between the Chacham and the Rebetzin. It was a big fight. Then you would say, he's a ladder marry. The woman that made a nether, you're not allowed to marry the woman. Yes. Okay. Well, if there's a fight, you're allowed to? Yes. Why? Because he did not do it. It was a fight before. Eh, you learned Yvamas before. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what Rashi says. Says Rashi, if he had a fight, so everybody knows in a big fight, the big brightness. The fact that he divorced his wife is not, he's not such a terrible guy. He didn't divorce her to marry the woman in Bezdin. It's interesting because you think the opposite. <laughs> He had a fight. He divorces his wife. Okay, so people are going to say, look, look what he did. He, he hurried it. He, made it. he divorced her. He, he had his eyes on this woman. That's why he didn't give her. No. People understand. It was a rocky relationship. They were in a big fight. And the fact that he divorced her had nothing to do with this woman that he met in Bezdin. But if there's no fight, so why is he divorcing her? Obviously, he's divorcing her because he only wants to be married to one woman, and which is not his, not his current wife, the new woman. No, there's no fight. It reminds me of my kids. He started, she started, it's not my fault, it's his fault. It depends. If it's Argil who, he started the fight. So once again, he started the fight. He wanted to get into a fight with her so he could divorce her, so he could marry this woman he met in court. No, but if she started the fight, how does she know that he's going to divorce her so he can marry somebody else? That doesn't make any sense. So if she started a fight, and because of the fight he divorced her, then there's not going to be any rumors. Okay, fine. V'chulon shenisu koso kedai dach misa amisa v'gerishin agerishin. Okay, I made a little cartoon here. Check this cartoon out. Mari the Gustav. Maybe. There we go. You could tell this was not by Yoshi. This I did today. Okay. This guy, step number one, this guy's in court. He's testifying that he saw Reuven dead. Rachel's husband, Reuven, is dead. Okay. I suspect, me personally, I don't know if he's a liar. I suspect he's a liar. Fine. Then comes step two. Rachel goes ahead and marries another guy, Shimon. Shimon drops dead. And in the sign it says, warning, Katlanus. She's a dangerous, nobody should marry her. She killed me, she killed her first husband. She's a Katlanus. Now, I'm saying that because there's a mandama that says that after you have two wives that die, you're not, you're not allowed to marry her, Katlanus. And then this Chacham Rachel, she goes and she marries Pinocchio. <laughs> Fine, that's the story here. So the Gemara, now the Gemara, I didn't have time to do it in a get. The same exact thing happened with a get. A guy comes and testifies, nechta, nechta, that Rachel's divorced. Instead of a body on the floor, her husband divorces her. Step two is she marries another guy called Shimon, and Shimon, instead of dropping dead, he 
gives her a divorce. So two divorces. And now she wants to marry the original aid that said, Okay, same case. So the, the Gemara says, misa Hold on to this chart for a second. That it's talking about even in a case like this, that two times her husband died, and now she wants to marry him. Perhaps this is a raya against Rebbi. After a woman, after her two husbands die, or this is a Chiddush Gadol according to Rashi, after a a husband's two, after a woman gets divorced twice by, a, by her husband, she no longer can get married. That's Rashi's thing. That the machloikis of a katlanis is also by a divorce. Now, this you don't have by a man, unfortunately. You have a man, there's a, there's a guy, I heard, that he got married seven times. And that, you know what they walked him down to the chuppah? <laughs> I just made it up on the spot. Fine. No, seriously, a, a guy can be a, guy, a man can be married. There's also things kept on us. Oh, eight, six of his wives died. So six of his wives died. Next, seventh, eighth. But a katlan is such a thing as a woman who kills her husbands, and not physically. She caused them to die somehow. So. So over here you see that this Pinocchio guy could marry her, says the Mishnah. So obviously we don't know like Rebbe that says that you're no one. Forget it. Forget that he's an aide, not an aide. Anyone in the street should not marry this woman. It's also to marry her because it's a Sakonis the Fossers. You'll find yourself dead in a, in a, in a couple of days. So Amela, from the fact that the Mishnah talks, could he marry her? Could he not marry her? Obviously we don't go like Rebbe. What's the other Shita? Chazaka. Chazaka is not two times, it's three times. That's the famous Machalik in Shaz. Is Chazaka twice, three times. We all know Chazaka three times, but the, here's Rebbe. Rebbe holds Chazaka is only after two times. Says Gemara, Loi, Misa, Gerushin, Vigerushin, Misa. When you look at this cartoon, you can't do step one is that he testified that her husband died. Step two, her <laughs> husband died. What you have to do is step one, he testified that her husband died. Step two, her husband divorced her. So now you have this woman, Rachel, had one divorce, one death, and now she's marrying Pinocchio. But if it was, you're right, according to Rabbi, you can't say that there was two deaths or two divorces. It's either divorce, uh, death, death, divorce, but not two in a row. Great. Next, Sugiyah. Now it says that the Chacham, when he says that this woman is also to her husband, he himself cannot marry her, but he can make a good shidduch for his son. We learned, again it says over here in the side, the sanya, it's a b'raiso, anita meno isho. If there's a rumor about him and a woman, also be ima ube bito ba So there's a woman that there's a rumor about her with a man. So that man is not allowed to marry that woman's mother or relatives, very close relatives. So what's the difference? Why over here could, there's a chashash rumor between the Chacham and this woman. He's, his son is allowed to marry this woman. Why, why is it different than when there's a rumor with a woman, you're not allowed to marry that woman's daughter. Says the Gemara, I guess in those days it's a little different. Who visits who? Women visit each other. So if there's a rumor between you and a mother, so you can't marry her daughter because the daughter and mother visit each other. So there's a chashash that he's going to go back to the original mother where the, where the rumors were. And that's even a, a Raisa. I just turned it to Isidar Raisa because now it's uh, Ima Ubita, Isidar Raisa. However, not so concerned that there's going to be a lot of visiting between the father and son. Inami. So what's the case? We're concerned that the, there's a rumor between a man and a mother. She's not allowed to marry the daughter. But over here, in our case, 
There's a room between, Chosh is the room between the Chacham and a woman. He's permitted to let his son marry her. Why? If this man comes in there, this Chacham comes, and he's with this person's wife, then that person is going to have to divorce her. The son is going to have to divorce his own wife because his father was with his wife. So the son is going to be careful. We don't have to make Zairus where the son is going to take care of business. He's not going to let the father in here. He knows that the father had to do with her something in a bezin once. He's always going to keep an eye on his father. But when it comes to, to a woman, the woman doesn't care. So the husband went and was with her mother. Maybe she doesn't care that much. She's not gonna, it's not going to ruin her marriage. So she, she's not going to make, she's going to turn a blind eye to it. If he's Meshuggah and he wants to be with her mother, okay, whatever. She's not going to make such a thing. So that's why we have to be geyser and say, don't marry the daughter. We have to take care of business. Because the daughter won't take care of business. Because it won't ask her. As long as it doesn't hurt her to the point where her husband has to divorce her, she won't take care of it. Yahachi of Ivnami. So then why does it say that the Chacham, he's, a, he's permitted to make a Shidduch for his son and his brother. It doesn't say that he's permitted to make a Shidduch for his father. Maybe it's a great Shidduch for his father. And that was again in those generations. Today it's a little different. In those days, we had fear for our fathers. So the son is not going to do anything with the father's wife. He's scared of his father. But a father doesn't care about his son that much. I think that's a problem. That's why the Mishnah only talks about making a shidduch for the son. Certainly, of course, he can, he can make a shidduch for the father. He's not going to be mezana with his father's wife. Nobody's crazy enough to do that. A brand new parak. Hmm? This is? How do you know? Nah! Don't listen to the naysayers. Hardest parking in Vamas. Look, it was hard. You didn't have these charts. Look at these charts. You can volume stuff. Okay. You tell me after share if this was hard. But it's a good thing I'm going on vacation tomorrow, no? On the plane and on the, the, the slopes and the thing. Okay, great. Arbo Achim, I don't know, Gary, it's a shtickle hot in here. What are you saying? Anybody hot besides me? It's very hot. Maybe you can turn on some air conditioner. Huh? It's on, it's on, the air conditioner is on? Uh, maybe because the windows are open. Oh, sponsor. Sponsor by MDY Tehillim Group. Where we down for Fuz Yeshua, Shiduchim, for Klai Yisrael, and for MDY family. Join us at Tehillim.8mindav.com. This is the best air conditioner you get in the market. It's a Mitsubishi. Arba Achim. This is what it can do. No revolume. Arba Achim. Shnayim em nesum shteachos. Rabbi, I want to tell you something also. There's, I don't think there's any new chidushim on this daf. It's all things that we are familiar with, that we learned already. We know chalitza, we know what yibum is, we know the four brothers, you know, two sisters. It's basically everything we learned before. Nothing exciting and, and difficult. Some, some variations of what we learned maybe, but that's about it. You have the four brothers, the four Baldwin brothers. They're called Baldwin brothers because they're bald. And they're brothers, so you remember that they're brothers, even though that in real life though they resemble certain people that are not brothers. In this Masechta, they are brothers. And then you have the two Yushami women, one is Rachel, one is Leah, they're also sisters. Two of them are married to the two sisters. The two outer ones, it says married by them, Ruvain and Yehuda are married to two sisters. And the two outer guys, Reuben and Yehuda, they went bye-bye. Now, if you are saying, how could I say bye-bye about a guy that may, might be in the room now, and not in the room now, but well, Yehuda happens to be, resemble my own son, and I don't have a problem because we're learning Torah now, and this is what we're doing. So, Reuben and Yehuda go bye-bye. These two guys, Reuben and Yehuda. So these two women, Rachel and Leah, fall to the two remaining brothers, 
Shimon and Levi. Now let's think about it for a second. They're sisters. So what is each one called? Achois Zikukasai. Each one is Zakuk. If we hold Yesh Zika, Zika means a, there's a bond, uh, a natural bond between the two before there's any sort of Kiddushin or Yibum. Just the, the, the moment that the husband dies, the Yivama, she becomes bonded to the Yavam in some way, in different halachas. And therefore, since they're both bonded to both men, so each man cannot marry either one of them because each one is a sister. You're not allowed to marry sisters. So you're marrying achois kukasoi. Fine. So you can't do you can't do yibum. But since this idea of achois kukasoi is midrabanon, so that can't patter them completely. So they should go home. You can't go home. If it was the Raisa, there were two, you happened to be married to two. Let's say you were married to one, and one of them fell to you. Then she goes, bye bye. No, no chalitza, nothing. Why? Because Midir Raisa, you're not allowed to be married to two sisters, so Midir Raisa, she can't fall to you. But over here, this idea of a chais kukas is only the Rabbanan, and therefore we require a chalitza Midir Rabbanan. Harei elu chaltzais v'loy misiyabmois. So they require chalitza. But not yibam, because it's a chais kukas. So they'll say, well, it's only the Rabbana, let me marry her. Like in this picture, they got married, they have to divorce them. Rabbi Lezer says, no, you should know, it's a machlekes tanoim here. It's a tanoim, whether or not you have to divorce. Bishama hold, you're allowed to keep them. Okay, this is very simple. You're looking at all these crazy lines. It's mamish simple. All is what's going on here is, yeah, one of the two sisters is his mother-in-law. That's the whole story. Okay, could you picture that? One of the two sisters is Rachel and Leah. I moved them over a little bit just so that Rachel could get married to the plumber. One of the two sisters happens to be Shimon's mother-in-law. How? Because Shimon married Rachel's daughter. Very simple. Let's start from the top where it says one. Rachel marries the plumber and she has a daughter called Five Towns. And Shimon goes and marries Five Towns. Now, who? His niece. Well, no, 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 no. She married a woman. Now, who is Rachel to Shimon right now? His mother-in-law. Because Shimon married five towns and five towns' mother is Rachel. Ruvain marries Shimon's mother-in-law. It's possible. You guys know what a mother-in-law is. It's not like we're saying Kiddushimir. Just when it comes to the lines, and listen, you start getting confused. Shimon... Shimon, Reuven marries Rachel, who happens to be his own brother's mother-in-law, Givaldik. What happened was, you want to know what happened? Shimon married this woman, five towns, and at the chasana, Reuven noticed the mother-in-law by the chuppah, and he says, you know, I want to marry that woman. He arranged the husband's death, or he's already dead, the plumber went bye-bye, and he married her. What, what's the difference? The bottom line is, that if Reuven dies, could Reuven be miyabim Rachel? No, it's his mother-in-law. He can't be Miyav and Rachel. <laughs> Shimon cannot be Miyav. What did I say, Reuven? If Reuven dies, yeah, he's dead. If Reuven dies, Shimon, thanks. You're all paying attention to Givaldic. If Reuven dies, Shimon cannot be Miyav and his own mother-in-law. So what's great about this case is that if both Rachel and Leah fall to Shimon, Shimon would be able to be Miyav and Leah. Why? Because Rachel never falls to Shimon because Rachel's related to him. Yeah? It's not, no longer a chayzku kasai because she's not zakuk to Shimon. She's a, she's a mother-in-law. But when we look at Levi, Levi's not related to Rachel or Leah. So Levi would remain usher to both, says Benny. And Shimon is only related, is, is only related to one, so he's only usher to one. Let's take the exact same case, but we'll put it on Levi so there's no confusion. Because I don't want you to go to this and say, oh, there's a lot of lines. Okay, here. Now we just take the same exact thing. Levi married Batayin. 
So therefore, Leah is Levi's mother-in-law. So therefore, same exact case as we said a second ago, just with changing brothers and names. <coughs> Levi cannot marry Leah, but he could be Miyabim Rachel. Shimon is not related to any of them, so Shimon cannot be Miyabim either Rachel or Leah, as posh as can be. Oh, there's no tsara here. What do you see in tsara? Oh. Oh. Okay. Next. This is the same exact case. Right, boys, I just combined. Shimon's mother-in-law is Rachel. Leva's mother-in-law is Leah. So Shimon cannot be Miabim his mother-in-law, and Levi can't be Miabim his mother-in-law. So Levi is mutter to Shimon's mother-in-law, and Shimon is mutter to Levi's mother-in-law. That's it. That's the whole Mishnah. Not complicated at all. Anybody found it complicated? Okay, should we do it again? Yeah. Yeah. What? And we had all these cases, says Levi. Levi. Okay, very good. We had it and everything's good. And a lot of this Gemara that we're having tomorrow and today, we had some of his word for word even on Daftes. We have a whole sugi tomorrow on Daftes. Givaldi. So, so let's just go back to this case, the first case. One of them, Rachel, is Shimon's mother-in-law. Isra Erva, Asr Ba. Shimon is Asr in Rachel. So therefore, only because he's Asr in one of them, it makes him mutter in her sister Leah. Vasheni, but Levi, Asr Bishteim. Therefore, Levi, who's not related to any of the sisters, is Asr in both. But if instead of Rachel being Shimon's mother-in-law, She's only Isra Mitzvah. She's a Sheikh Shnia Midra Banan. She's a Erva only Midra Banan. Like she's a mother in law's mother or something. Or Visuk Dusha, or let's say Shimon is a Kayan. And Rachel is a, a divorcee. Or Mamzeres, or a Kayan Gadol Almana. Let's ask Veloi Misia Bemes. Now Midra Raisa, there is a Zika. There is a zik, there's a bond between Shimon and his mother-in-law. Or not mother-in-law, his Rachel, who's whatever. She's only a Shniah. So when I saw, he should be Miyabim her. Rabbanon invented and said that, that she's an Ervatim, but that's only with the Rabbanon. So therefore, he has to perform Chalitza, he can't be Miyabim So if you have the final case... Rachel is Shimon's mother-in-law, and Leah is Levi mother-in-law. The one who is, uh, it's his mother-in-law, he can't be I'm hurt, but he can marry her sister. And the other one can marry the other one. And the Gemara is going to tell us what the Vizui means. When you have two sisters, and she's a Yavama, Says the Gemara, from here we see from the fact that you cannot be Miyabim, one of the sisters, is because we said it's a chois kuka. So how is she your kuka through zika? We have to own, it, this only works, this whole problem works if there's a bond. And that bond makes the two Rachel and Leah sisters. That, are, that fell to you, but that's only if there's a bond. So you see, I hold there's a bond. There's Zika. The ain't Zika. Yeah, we had the Sugi, yeah? What's the answer, Levi? There's, a, there's another problem. You remember that? When I say, you'll, you'll remember very well. Says the Gemara, Mirdi Anim Itri Badagas, and look, Rachel and Leah. If we go here, Rachel, not, uh, uh, yeah. Rachel and Leah come from two different husbands. They had different husbands. They were married originally to Reuven and Yehuda. So they came from different chiyuvim. Uh, yeah, it's two, it's what? 26? Yeah, we're almost done. No? I'm it's very short. Yeah, yeah, almost done. Don't worry about it. How is that? We'll be done by, by in four minutes. Says the Gemara. Each, each brother, Shimon and Levi, should be having one of them. And the reason why they can't is because Yesh Zika says, No, there's no Zika. Maybe there is no Zika. You you're not forced. 
This is that very interesting halacha that we are concerned that if one of the brothers performs Yibum, the other brother might die. And if he dies, what's going to be with the woman? Let's say Shimon does Chalitza to, to Rachel. And before anybody has a chance to do anything, Levi drops dead. Leah, nothing will happen to her. Nobody will do Yibum to her. Nobody will do Chalitza to her. Why? Because the only person left is Shimon. And Shimon cannot be Miyabmer because it's Achais. Chalutza he, he, he did Chalitza. Shimon did Chalitza. He can only do Chalitza. So it's Achais Chalutza so we're going to be vatal. Loyla ma'imlach, ain't zika. No, we're talking about each one. Hold on, let's see if you're right. You're saying if he did yibum, yeah, if he did yibum, you're right. It's a chayis ishtay. Very good. Dilmad miyav mechad ma'isidach. You're right. So we're concerned that it's a very far-fetched thing. Concerned that what that Levi might die before. He has a chance to do chalitza. Very, very vaytazach. They come about the mitzvah. They say, uh, Repinkos, anytime he had a mitzvah, you do it right away in the morning. He was chayshish that he was going to die. You have to be chayshish that he's going to die. You got to do it chabra in the mitzvah right away. Okay? Yahi says the Gemara, if, that, if you're so concerned, then why don't you say this case right here? Yahi, shtlosanami. You're concerned about mitzvah zivam. So let me explain exactly what's going on. If the concern is, if we're talking about Yej Zika or Ein Zika, then it makes a lot of sense to talk about four brothers. Why? Where do you see a bigger Chiddush of Zika? When there's one brother or when there's two brothers? When there's two brothers, it's a much bigger Chiddush that the Zika works. The bond works. Two brothers are sort of married to one woman. It's a very... So that's why the Mishnah talks about four. But if you're telling me, you hear this Chap? This is in Rashi, it's not my chap. I'm just explaining Rashi. If you're telling me that the point of the Mishnah is that I'm concerned that one of the brothers will die and it's a concern of Levatam Mitzvah so then I don't need four brothers. I can say the same Chiddush of the Mishnah with three brothers. That if two sisters fall to one brother, they're Achoy Skukasoy, and I have to do Chalitza right away. Says Gemara, Yachid Lasanami. Says Gemara, let me buy No, it's much better to put it on four. For uh, sorry, not the high school chalutzazi. If there's two sisters, the concern is you should do what? Two sisters fall. If there's only one brother left, you should do chalitza. Because if he does yibum, what's going to happen? One sister is going to be left. Nothing. Not 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 chalitza na yibum, and that's mevatel mitzvah I can tell you this idea of mevatel mitzvah when there's only one brother, not two brothers. Says Gemara, no, I still want to tell you four brothers. Okay, in this case, if Shimon decides to be Miyabim Rachel, then of course, on the spot, he's Mavatam Mitzivamim of Leah. So that's not a big chiddush. But if there's four brothers and Shimon decides to be Miyabim Rachel, to say that Levi is going to die within the next 25 minutes. That's, that's huge. That's a big chiddush. Okay. A lot of people actually shook their heads and were saying it. How is it possible? Okay. But if you're concerned that Levi might die before Levi has a chance to perform chalitza, yachi, turning to the chavavim and beis, chamisha nami. Now, Rabbi I got to show you this. Just for this case, I want to introduce to you a new brother. This is Shimon's twin, sort of. I don't know. Yeah, cybers, but it is based on Shimon. Just wearing an interesting suit. And now we're going to put him into the thing. Here we go. If you side by side, you can see they're very similar. Just, this guy has brown sideburns. Okay. Huh? Baby, you suffer. Mm. He had a, he had a, he had payas, no? One of, oh no, one of them had payas, one that's Vulan. Okay. Chamisha uh, Nami. So if you have five brothers, maybe I should be concerned that two of them are going to drop dead. So in, in this mandoma, we're talking about in the mandoma that says I'm concerned someone's going to die. One of the brothers is going to die. Two brothers are not going to die. One brother will die. How about three brothers? For sure not going to die. But, so the point is, very, very, very important to remember this. 
if you're concerned about people dying, so it's limited to what the Mishnah says. When there's four brothers and two fall to the four, to, to two brothers that are, remain alive, you do chalitza. But if there's more brothers, maybe you can do yibum. But if you hold Yish Zika, Yish Zika works on a hundred brothers. A hundred brothers all have Zika, so it doesn't matter four or a hundred. So there's a big nafkimina between if you hold Yish Zika or if you hold Kumivatum Mitzvah Yivam. Sponsored, I don't know the new Lashon. What's the new Lashon? It's a, the same person, Moshe Horn? Yeah, in honor of Jody Joe Krause. <laughs> <laughs> in honor of Joey Joe Krause? What? Jolly Joe. Oh, Jolly Joe. <laughs> Listen, whatever. What is it, a new month or just switching? It's a new month. Ah, okay, he has, the, he has the right. Where is the us? Rabbi Isai, one of the G'daylam in Ramavit Shemesh just walked in. He's about to take it for her. I'm not kidding you. Eliyahu, come to the front. You got to tell Dailam what you're doing. Come, who come to the front. Get over here. Get over here. This is Rabbi Yakim from our Koilo. He's, I'm not kidding you, he's working right now. This Ben is Manim, he's about to take a test on a thousand daf Gemara, Gemara Rashi, Taisvis. <laughs> yeah. Shalom Aleichem, what are you doing here? Come to say goodbye to you before you go to Chutzlaret. Wow. This is not planned, not planned. Shkoyach, beautiful. You see this? See what's going on there? I was here before also, I was hiding, but I was hiding, but I was here before. Ah, you are? Yeah, yeah. I was here from the beginning of the pad. Ooh, wow. Second sponsor, in honor of Shmuley Sugar, no, that's okay. Sponsored in honor of Ed Kinsbersky, Brian Kinsbersky, and Ari Miller for learning the daf. Omarovo, Baravuno, Omarav. Says Rav. What? Yeah, you remember that from Yeshiva? <laughs> We're going to do it in four minutes in Shalom Yisrael. Next, so yeah. Omarav, Sholish Achayus, how many, how many weeks did you spend on in Yeshiva? What Yeshiva did you go to? In Lakewood. So how long do you spend on it? At least a month. A month? On this little sugi right here? And you're going to tell me afterwards what was so hard. It's not easy. You guys didn't have the charts. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, we go with Rashi. We're Dafyomi. We go with Rashi straight through the whole sugi. We don't even know about Ramban, nothing. Oh, my Rava. And the bigger the Tais is, the better it is for us. Because then it's just less Gemara to learn. And you're valid. Oh, my Rava. Oh, my Rava. Oh, my Rava. Huh? You have, here we go. Here's the case where Boisai introducing to you a new woman. Zilpa. Or Zara. You call her whatever you want. Here we go. This is so simple. This mamish. No, no, no. Bemis. This is simple, simple. Three men on top married to the three middle women, and the three men on top all went bye bye. Okay? You have Reuven, Shimon, who do you have there? You have Reuven, Yehuda, and Levi. I just, because I thought they were cute, the guys in the bottom, the twins, I left them alive. <laughs> so, it's very, very simple. You have three women falling to two men, what do you do? Each one requires a Yibam and Chalitza, well, not a Yibam in this case, because they're sisters, but they require Chalitza, they need to get married, what are they going to do? So, and they come from different batim, like the Gemara calls it on Amad Aleph. They, 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 you, you can't patter. If two women fall to you from one husband, you give one a chalitza, another one goes away. She doesn't need a, anything. But these are individual women married to different men. So, what you do is, one brother gives a chalitza to one. I made it very simple. Mamish like the Lushan of the mission. It doesn't have to be like this. The demtsais, I mamish put her in the middle, but the Gemara obviously is taught, not, doesn't mean... The mission doesn't mean the middle one. It could be the side one. It's the same thing for all. But basically, Shimon gives Chalitza to Rachel. What's his name? Don gives Chalitza to Zilpa. And then the two of them give Chalitza to whoever's left over, to the middle one, or to whoever's left over. Okay? What? You don't do what Rabbi Chaim Ganassi said to do. Cut her out. Oh, you mean like that joke? Cut her out, each one. Okay. Let's see inside. Should I repeat this case or is it simple? Chlar, no? Mamish simple. In Lakewood, just to get through this case, three days. 
שוש אחוי זה בום שלום זה שני אחים יבום זה חודש לאחס וזה חודש לאחס והם צוי סריך החליצים שניהם so the, the, the middle one we call it the middle one it means the leftover one the one that didn't get a pure chalitza from one brother she requires chalitza from both what's pshat? why? one should just give her chalitza Omali Rabba, Midika Amr's and Tsois, Tsui Khalisa Mishnayim, since you say that the center one, the middle one, the last one, needs Khalisa from both, Kosavis Yesh Zika. First of all, this is the concept of Yesh Zika. She is bond to both brothers. She needs to get out of this bond. And one brother cannot do it alone. Vavila Khalitsa Psula. Why? Because according to Rashi, this is a bad Khalitsa. It's not a strong Khalitsa. It's a very weak Khalitsa. Why is it a weak chalitza? Could any of those two brothers on the bottom marry her? Be her? No, why? Because she's a chais chalitza. So since they can't marry her, typically chalitza comes instead of yibum. When I could perform a real yibum, I could perform a real chalitza. But over here, I can't perform a yibum. So my chalitza is a weak chalitza. So if it's a weak chalitza, it only takes out, it only does half the job, whatever it is. Let the other brother do also half. Me, my half and your half will be a whole half, a whole thing. Something like that. That's not the pshat that came out with in Lakewood, but it's good enough for tonight. In other words, so let's understand. Vavila chalitza psula. Chalitza psula, not literally the chalitza's puzzle. It's chalitza grua. It's bad. It's not a good one. It doesn't perform on all cylinders. It, it, it does half a job, let's call it. Stam, what? Oh, very good. Excellent kasha. The other thing more is kasha. Yesh kosavris yesh ziko. Vavilo chalitza psula. Ve chalitza psula sorech lachzor akolachim. If you're giving, you're performing a weak chalitza, it's not good enough. You have to get everybody involved. Everybody should do their chalitza. And like this, she could go get married to somebody else. Ask the Gemara, Ihachi kamay sanami. Then all the women are a chalitza psula. Then how, why is one why is woman one woman better than the other woman? They should all require chalitza from all brothers. Says Gemara Eid the novel bevas achas hachinami. If the death of all three brothers, they are on a plane and it crashed and they all died in one instant, then you're right. Then each woman would need a chalitza from both brothers. Why? Because each woman is it's a chalitza grua. But what happened was it wasn't a chalitza grua. The first woman, Rachel, got a very, very strong chalitza. Why? Because her husband died first. And she was the only Yavama available. So Shimon took it into his hands and he gave her a chalitza, a proper chalitza. He actually could have married her. He actually could have been her. And because he could have been her, then the chalitza he gave her is not a chalitza of Grua. It's a, it's a perfect chalitza. They, they, they died one after another. Nafla what happened was, Rachel fell to Yibum because her husband, Ruvain, died. Chalatzla Ruvain. So, so we, call him, uh, we call him Shimon, gave her Chalitza. Nafla Idach. Then, Leah fell to Yibum. Okay, call her Zilpa. Fine. Zilpa. Sorry, Zilpa fell even. Why? Because her husband, Levi, died. And then the third one, the center one, fell even by herself. So in our case, we call it Shimon. It's not like the Gemara. This is, I should have been more medayik in the Lush and the Gemara, but okay, sorry. So Shimon, or whoever it is, the one guy gives a chalitza, and he gets rid of his zika that he asked her, hai, mafka zika soy. And then the second one is mafka zika. Ask the Gemara, v'amarav ain't zika. This whole sugya, look at the top line. Omarava baravuna omarav. It's on the second line. This whole sugya is rav. But rav himself holds ain't zika. You're telling me that this is based on the concept of zika, and it's a, z- 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 a, z- a chalitza, Grua, uh, psula, but Rav holds ain't zika. zika kamar. And with that, we'll finish today's shir. Rabbi Sai, thank you for joining. Thank you, Tzadik Rabbi Kovics, for not going to your friend and coming here tonight. Yishkoyach.
Great week, everybody. Great week. Rabbi Isaiah, if you're not going to be here tomorrow, I just want to say, Ben Ismanov is coming up. The Itzahara has a lot of excuses. This year is going to be in funny places and hotel rooms and this and that. There's going to have Pesach. You're going to have Zdorim. Don't fall off the bandwagon. And if you do, you jump right back in after Pesach. Good to go.